4. Welcome back to our study on the book of Romans. This is Sonship Orientation, session number 64. Sometimes I wonder, out of 64 sessions, what do you know? <laughs> All right. Now, the last time we left off, we were talking about uh, getting ourselves ready to go back and look at, at, at a definition of these four things. We still have a note taker to do, so we have a whole lot of things to cover, so I want to get with it. But I do, want, I, do, I do want to remind you that as we get ready to look at godly wisdom and understand what that is, in fact, all of these things, just as we in the Lord's table put something on display, I'm going to tell you something else very interesting. As you learn how to think like your father in these four decision-making skills, you're going to make some decisions that are very small decisions. You'll make them right out of that. Some of those decisions no one may ever know about. You may be deciding something for yourself. You may not talk to anyone else about it. But as you have these decision-making skills and you begin to do that, you know what? Every time you do that, no matter how small that decision is, you're putting on display to the creatures in the heavenly places that you are gaining the wisdom that it's going to take to move into their place. I just want you to remember that. These are, this is a big... This, you know what this does? This takes very small decisions and raises it up to have big impact. Every decision that you make out of this is going to manifest to those angels, principalities, and powers that you're going to have what it takes to man those positions. Isn't that going to be something? Okay. So, the bulk of decisions, I have a couple things to give you on the PowerPoint here. You'll not only use them up there, you'll use them here. They're practical, remember, we talked about that. But the bulk of the decisions that you're going to make are going to be either wise decisions, and if they're not, now look, I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly here, but if they're not made out of godly wisdom, your father counts what you're using to make that decision as foolishness. Do you remember what he's going to tell the Corinthians? Well, I think we went over there and looked at that a little bit one time, a couple of months back. He said, God hath made the wisdom of this world, what? Foolishness. And when you make a decision out of that wisdom, God says, I'm looking at foolishness. So you're going to either make a decision that's wise or foolish. It's either going to be just or it's going to be unrighteous. It's going to be judgmental. I don't mean that in the sense that you people think about, oh, quit being so judgmental. I'm talking about... In this area of judgment, godly judgment, versus decisions that lack... I didn't know what the antonym to this would be. That would be versus decisions that lack properly evaluating the facts. Because that's what a judgmental decision is going to require out of you. In fact, we'll see this when we define these terms. And the last one, it's either going to be an equitable decision or it's going to be a selfish self-centered decision. And that's exactly what these things are at stake. So you're going to learn a lot of things. Godly wisdom is going to allow you to see consequences of your decisions, not just immediately, but way down the road. And there's going to be, a, there's just a whole lot to this. Okay. And so I just kind of want you to have that in your mind. I want one other thing to be in your mind as we start looking at this, and that is as you learn these, now, Norma came up at the break and she said, okay, so we're going to get this education and whatever we're at when we die, that's where we're going to be laboring with our Father in the heavenly places. I said, right. She said, will we have the chance to learn and move up? The answer is no. You're not going to move up. Where you are is where you are. Now, you know what that does? That may keep you from, by the, may keep you from praying for the rapture to happen today. <laughs> you could actually get a little further. By the way, you could pray for the rapture to happen today. God, God knows what he's doing with that issue. 
There is some, he is waiting for something. That rapture is not going to happen out of a vacuum. He is waiting for something to happen on this earth before the blessed hope will take place. Now, we may have time to talk about that at some other point. But you, we're not going to be able to pinpoint the date of the rapture. That's why all those guys that write those books about, you know, the Lord's coming back this year. They always call, it, they always call you know, it's funny, isn't it? The catching out of the body of Christ, they always want to associate it with a Jewish feast day. You ever notice that? Because it says the trump of God or sound, the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ. Well, it's going to happen on the feast of trumpets. No, it won't. No, it won't. And I'm not trying to be... What's the word I'm looking for? Argument, I'm, that's not the word I'm looking for, but for the lack of a better word, I'm not trying to be argumentative about it. It won't happen on a Jewish feast day. Let me ask you this. When did the dispensation of grace begin? Who was the first person in the body of Christ? Apostle Paul. Or, or as he was known then, Saul of Tarsus. What feast day did that happen on? It didn't start on a feast day. It doesn't need to end on a feast day. God's not looking for a day. God's not going, well, here comes the Feast of Trumpets. I think I'll go ahead and finish it up here. He's looking for something else. And it doesn't matter when that thing happens. When that happens, God says, I am no longer offering grace. So when that takes place, this dispensation of grace will be over. All right, I kind of got off on that. But the thing that I wanted you to see is, as you are, well, I was using Norma, so let me continue to use our conversation as an example to everybody because I think you'll benefit from it. So she was saying, okay, so if all we know is sonship orientation, and by the way, I did ask her, Norma, if she was fixing to check out anytime soon. She said, no, I was just wondering because she was asking me these questions. She had that wild look in her eye, you know, how she gets, you know. So anyway, I said, if all you know is your sonship orientation, no, you haven't been educated in these things yet, but don't you already know more than you ever knew before? Amen. Yes, you do. And that means no, knowing, saying Abba Father, which is saying yes to your sonship. It is saying to your Heavenly Father, yes, I want this. Remember where he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And that cry of Abba, Father is saying, I understand I've been adopted and I'm a son. Yes, train me as that son to labor with you in your business. I understand what that is. I'm saying yes. And the fact that you keep coming back tells me you're either the biggest gluttons for punishment in the world, or you've said yes. Okay, some of you give me the look like, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, but look. Because you said yes, and because you've already gone through almost 65 hours of orientation on this, you already, just by virtue of yes... You already move in this block. This is the people that didn't know about sonship. They knew about it and they said, ah, it's a bunch of baloney. It's just a short, ball-headed guy teaching something down there in Texas. Fine. They're here. Because you said yes, you've already moved out of this category into this. And you are going to be somewhere in that hierarchy. Now, just because you said yes, that qualify you to sit as a principality? No, no. But it does qualify you to do something. Don't ask me what the least thing is you can do. Because your Heavenly Father is pointing you to something bigger. Okay? He's not interested in enticing you with the lowest you can achieve. He's interested in something that brings Him more glory than that. But what I'm trying to get at is, as you're down here on this earth now, and we go through the orientation, then you go through the establishment, you're going to know even more. Even more. And then, as I, when I was talking to Norma, I said, let's suppose we get to godly wisdom. 
And you get those six parts of godly wisdom, and then it's all over for whatever reason. It's over. You do have the ability to make decisions based on godly wisdom, don't you? And you know what that means? Those decisions will come to you. If you say, well, I know we get wisdom and justice, and then it's over, more decisions come your way in the creature because you'll have the ability to think about those just like your heavenly Father. As an advanced son, I'm giving you something down the road here. As a, for those of you that are familiar, wise man and a man of understanding, you'll be able to take all four of these and actually combine Combine them together in various forms. Sometimes it might be wisdom and judgment. It might be wisdom, justice, and equity. It might even be all four of them. It might be equity and wisdom together. In all kinds of combinations, you'll be able to take those skills and put them together. And those last two, wise man and man of understanding, those last two will be able to do the combinations of those. What makes you a simple son is that you're able to take each one of these on their own and make decisions out of those four. But you will not, at the end of Romans, have the ability to just take all of those and put those together in every way. He's going to have to teach you how to do that. And he will. But that's part of the... Can you not see that's an advancement of your education? So guess what? He doesn't just use the word wisdom when you're first starting out. He also uses the word wisdom when you're up there as a very advanced son. What's, what's the next to highest nomenclature you can achieve? The highest is a man of understanding. What's the one just under that? Well, now you're right back to this wisdom issue again, aren't you? You're able to now take wisdom and actually utilize it with the other decision-making skills. And when you're able to do them all, guess what you are? A man of understanding. Now you know how to do that. Now here's the, uh, the point I was really trying to make on all of that, and that's this. As you make these decisions here on this earth, it's not just, no matter how small that decision is, you're showing something, you're putting something on display to the heavenly places that God intends to be put on display you are actually laboring with your Father while you're here on this earth. See, you thought, well, if I'm going to labor with God, I guess I've got to get a big radio ministry or some kind of big, you know, that's not it. Or I've got to pastor a church. That's not it. You can pastor a church and never labor one day with your heavenly Father. As you take these skills, folks, from the very first one, you'll go, look, I know how it's going to go because I've been there. Listen, i got all six parts of godly wisdom. I am somebody. <laughs> you are just enough to be dangerous. That's what you are. But you get to thinking. You get to look at that and you're going like, well, I... Now, is that something? Well, it is something, Yes. And, and even if you don't go any further because something happens, are you not going to be able to labor with your father in that skill? You absolutely will. Right here and now. And you know what you'll do? You'll find out that in this assembly, you'll actually put that skill of godly wisdom into practice. And you'll do it in your business and you'll do it at home, or you'll do it at school, or you'll do it wherever. And you'll utilize, and every time you do it, your father is saying, you are laboring with me. How can that be? You tell me. How can it be that by making those little decisions in godly wisdom, you are actually laboring with God? How can that be? Okay, okay. Eric, Eric played that really good, safe. He said, because he said so. Okay, and you can't, you can't beat that, huh? It's a right decision. Okay, it's a right decision. It's a godly decision. It's a godly decision. You're, because you're thinking like he's thinking, you're laboring with him in that. Do you see? 
And the more you do that down here, like anything else, the better you get at it. Right? What used When you first started with something, it took you a while, but you got there. Once you learned it, you could get there, it just, give me a minute. It's like when you were learning to add. I'm going to take the shoe off. Okay, I'm learning. But after a while, coming by tugboat there, is it, Gloria? Okay, all right. Sorry. Okay, look. But when you really get it down, you know what you're able to do? You're able to start going through that process really fast. Well, this is the way these skills work too. When you first get it, you're going to go, okay, here's what he was teaching me. And you're going to be looking over all six parts of that. And at first you'll be going, okay, well, let's see. You know what? It's not this part. Okay, it's this part. Okay, this decision fits into this part. And you'll kind of figure it out. But after a while, you know what? Someone will just say it and you'll just go, oh, yeah, godly wisdom. i got a couple parts that deal with that. Yeah, I got it. And, and you know, someone that's not there, they'll just look at you and go, wow. But, but here's the thing. You are laboring with him in that. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and the more you do it here, and the better you get at it, when you get up there, it's still going to be decisions. That's why he didn't give you a bunch of scenarios. He didn't say, when you go to you know, buy a car, do you buy this one or do you buy this one? He's not, he's not giving you a bunch of scenarios. You know what he's saying? Have my wisdom know how to think about it like I'm thinking about it. And whatever it is that you're going to be deciding, you will look at that the way I look at that. And when you do that, you'll know exactly what I, your father, would be doing with that. And then you'll... So when you get up there, it'll be the same way. It'll be the same way. You say, but it's going to... I'll be scared though because I'll be in the creature and I won't know what to do. But this godly thinking is still godly thinking, right? Yes. Okay, you'll see. You'll see. All right. Um, okay, so. Each time you make a decision according to these things, you're actually engaging and laboring with God my Father in His business. So I just want you to see that that's the way that's going to be happening with you. Now I think Proverbs 1.3. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, notice, and judgment, and equity. Notice those ands in there. There is no and after, before justice. Did you notice that? It goes wisdom, justice. You would think it would just go judgment and equity. But it puts the and in before judgment and the and in before equity. And of course, you know there's a reason for that, right? Okay, <laughs> Okay. Gloria goes, of course. Okay. And there is. There is a reason for that. We are going to look at that. I don't think we're going to get there today. But what I do want to do is I want to show you something. Now, let, let me... Hmm, i got to erase some things. So, give me just a second. I need, I need some area on the board. Let's do it like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through this part of the table of contents and you already know that sitting back in Proverbs are all those exhortations. By the way, does Israel also have doctrine back there in the book of Proverbs? Sure they do. Sure. But you're going to, we're not interested in their doctrine. That's different. That's for the Israel program. We're interested in our doctrine. So here's what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to take these things and show you the exhortation in the book of Proverbs. And then I'm going to take you to the book of Romans and show you the doctrine. So you'll be able to hook all of that up. In fact, that's going to be the area that we're going to look at with your note taker. Now... As we get ready to talk about wise, godly, wise decisions, there is an exhortation that's sitting over there, and I'm going to give it to you on the PowerPoint, but there's an exhortation sitting over there in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. That's the part that deals with this. 
with godly wisdom. That's the exhortation. But I want to pull one part out of that exhortation for a moment and show you how we didn't understand this Bible before you understood sonship. I'm going to take you to a, a very familiar passage. Almost all of you have heard this. This verse is so well known, they put it on refrigerator magnets and stick it on the fridge. They put it on bumper stickers. You put it on the bumper of your car. You've heard people talk about this all the time. When I was in Bible college, I had a buddy. He and I practically quoted this verse every, these two verses every single day. Because we were always trying to figure out what was God's will. What was God's will? You know, when I was still in school, a pastor contacted me and said, I would like for you to come to work for me as associate pastor. Oh, dream come true. But I thought, but I'm, I'm not finished with school. So does God want me to say no to the ministry opportunity and stay in school? Or does He want me... Did God open this door and He wants me to go through it? Or is this Satan tempting me to get out of God's will? And, you know, that's the way I... You know how you always thought about that. That's the standard way we were taught to think about that. And so I always looked at this verse right here. Uh, that's that... Oxford English Dictionary. We'll, we'll, we may come back to that. Here it is. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Boy, did I claim that every single day. Especially when I had that job opportunity. Oh, God. And I told my buddy, I said, Man, I don't know. You know what? And I always thought God chastened you, because I heard all those preachers talk about... Well, I ran from God and He whipped me and He did this. And look, you know why I make fun of that? Let me bring it down to what I was really hearing. I heard a preacher stand up and say, God was calling me to start a church over in, to take a church uh, uh, over in Arkansas. And he was out in the Carolinas. And he said, and I ran from God. And he said, and it wasn't till God punished me for my rebellion by my house catching on fire and my children perishing in that house that I submitted to His will and went. And when you're a young preacher boy and you think that's the way God's dealing with you, you know what? You're, you're scared to death. I remember saying to my friend, I don't want to get out of God's will because if I go and I'm supposed to stay, He'll whip me. And if I stay and I'm supposed to go, He'll whip me. And I felt like God was standing there with a big stick raised up going, Okay, Mike, your move. You staying or going? I'm staying, whack! <laughs> or, I'm going, whack, whack! I just felt like that's the way it was. And I told my buddy, I said, I don't know what to do. He said, I'm glad it ain't me. That was his response. Glad it ain't me. I thought, boy, I'm serving the Lord fun. Every day is just waiting for God to whack you with his big stick. Do you understand how much freedom came into my own heart when I finally understood grace. You're saying, well, Brother Mike, you're saying God didn't punish that preacher and burn his... No, He didn't. No. Absolutely not. In fact, that's a, that's a travesty to even blame that on God. That's unbiblical. If that's the way God's doing it, this is not a dispensation of grace and He lied to us. That's called performance. Guess where performance puts you? Right under the law. That's exactly right. So, I claimed this verse. You probably have too from time to time. You may have looked at that. So I thought, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I said, Lord, I, do, I tried to walk through this verse. I'm trusting you to show me what you want me to do. Lean not to your own understanding. So I'd go like this, okay, God, I'm not even going to think about what I'm supposed to do. I'm just going to leave this all up to you. What was he supposed to do? Send me a candy gram? I was going to start interpreting circumstances. How dangerous is that? Verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You say, what is, what is that really about? By the way, now let's look at this in the area of sonship. Because I told you, this comes out of the exhortation. This is an exhortation. There's no doctrine here. This is an exhortation. But it's about getting godly wisdom. Now, look at that. 
Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You want me to, let, me, let me show you how this fits into sonship. He has given you exactly what you're going to need to get godly wisdom. Because this is the exhortation for it. Can you trust that what He has given you is exactly what you're going to need? That is trusting in the Lord. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Why can't you lean unto your own understanding? Because the only kind of wisdom you have isn't godly wisdom. Do you see? In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Didn't we talk about ways and paths? We did. And here's the thing. How are you going to know that path? Godly wisdom is going to show you that path. See, what I was hoping is, God was just going to somehow, just because I really wanted it, he was just going to just open my head up and put it in there. And suddenly, I'd just come to the realization. And what he was really saying is, Hey, son, I've got this whole doctrine for godly wisdom, and it's going to teach you this. I'm not just going to drop it into your head. Would you ever counsel your kids to take their test at school that way? Hey, don't worry about studying. Just, you know what, when you get up to that test, just pray for the answer. Listen, I've been there. I'm not very good at that. All right. So, I just wanted to kind of show you how that... Can you see how that fits in with the education for godly wisdom? Makes perfect sense. Other than that, you know what this is like? Hit and miss. You did it sometimes, you say, oh yeah, that worked out really good. You did it the next time, you didn't get an answer. I don't know what happened to that. Ah, okay, so now, here we go. We're going to take a look at this um, note taker that you've got there. And we're going to fill these things in. So here we are. The first thing is, that's what you're looking at right there. I'm going to show you the verse, which is already up there. And then I'm going to, get, I'm going to show you... The table of contents, the part that it applies to, that's in Proverbs 1. We're going to show you the exhortation in Proverbs and the doctrine that you're going to get in Romans. So here's the first part. The table of contents is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2, and A is because it's the first half of that verse. And that is what you've got there when it says, to know wisdom and instruction. Now there is an exhortation that goes with this. What do we got left here? We have an, an exhortation, and, we're, and you can read it in the book of Proverbs, and here it is. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 7 to 19. So if you're wanting to go back and look at the exhortation that talks to you about that first part, knowing godly wisdom, there's where it is. Remember I told you to know wisdom and instruction, and that means to do what? Know it exists and know it has some value. Do you remember what the exhortation says? Fools despise wisdom and instruction. If you're going to say, hey, this doesn't mean much to me, your Heavenly Father says, then in my eyes you're a fool. That's the exhortation. The doctrine that you're going to encounter, anybody want to tell me where it is? <laughs> remember, this is your orientation. Okay. Boy, y'all are eager, aren't you? Now every answer is Romans 12. <laughs> okay. In the table of contents, underneath that, you're going to have Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2, B, part B. That's the last part of the verse. And it reads in red right under there, to perceive the words of understanding. That is that. The exhortation. Now just looking at the PowerPoint, what do you think, where do you think the exhortation would be? Just look at what you already have. Where do you think the exhortation would be? Because you run out of verses in chapter 1. <laughs> you would have been right. You would have been right. But you got to the end of chapter 1, now you have to go to chapter 2. That's the only reason. Okay. 
the doctrine that you're going to get for this, perceiving the words of understanding. Anybody want to tell me in Romans where you're going to get it? There you go. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 39. And when you get through, that is the end of chapter 8. And when you get through with that, guess what you've got completely done? Your sonship orientation and your sonship establishment. You've got them both. And that's what that is in phase 1 of level 1. So, what I was going to put on the board was this. What kind of son are you then from Romans chapter 8? Verses 14 to 39. That encompasses all of that that we've covered so far. What kind of a son are you? How many say a simple son? Huh? Just adopted. All you've, done, all you've learned is an orientation to your adoption and an establishment in it. That, that you're just you're an adopted son. Not anything wrong with that, but that's just where we all start, right? Okay, now let's go over to the phase two. And in the table of contents, that is Proverbs 1 3. That's the verse we've been looking at all day today. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. There's Proverbs 1 3. So I've broken this down into those four parts. To receive the instruction of wisdom. So what, right out beside wisdom, you should have the exhortation is in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. That is the exhortation for godly wisdom. You find that back in Proverbs. I, I didn't put it on the deal, but you need to make, make sure you make a note on your note taker that that 3, 1 through 20, that's a Proverbs. That's the exhortation. Remember? All right. The doctrine for godly wisdom. Anybody want to take? Okay, Gloria's going, now that's Romans 12. She's learned that if she'll just keep saying that long enough, it'll finally be right. And it is right. Romans chapter 12, verses specifically, verses 3 through 16. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 16. And in those verses, you have all six components of godly wisdom. Is that too small? Can y'all see that? Can you see it? Okay. Teresa, you can see that? Okay. Justice is the second one. And here it is. Chapter th Proverbs chapter 3, verses 21 to 35. And that's the exhortation. When you get to the book of Romans, the doctrine that's going to go along with that is Romans chapter 12, verse 17. And it goes through chapter 13, verse 7. I have never given you this information before. This is, I know this is all, this kind of breakdown is new for all of you. So, huh? It's instruction, that's right. It's instruction, that's exactly right. That third decision-making skill of judgment is going to come, the exhortation in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10, and it's going to run through chapter 5 and verse 6. And you have doctrine that you're going to take up in the book of Romans, and that is going to be Romans chapter 13, running verses 8 to 14. Uh, verse 8 to 14. Chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. And the last decision-making skill is equity. And the exhortation is going to be Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15, to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 19. And the doctrine that you're going to encounter in the book of Romans is going to be Romans chapter 14, verse 1, all the way to Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Now there's the layout and when you get all of phase two done, so this is, 
This is, I should have said, this, this is phase one of level one. Now what we've done is we've gone from Romans chapter 12, verse 3, all the way to, pro, uh, to chapter 15 and verse 7. And that is phase two. And when you finish, excuse me, when you finish that, what kind of son are you? How many say simple? How many of you are sure? <laughs> I've, I've told you too many stories. You won't fall for that anymore. You are a simple son. You really do have... the And simple, again, is not a bad thing. It just means one-dimensional. You're able to take each one of these skills and put them to use by themselves. Now, do, can you see with me how that means that even though you have all four of those, because you do not yet know how to combine all of those, there will still be some growth that you'll have to do in order to make more complex decisions. Yes? yes. Okay. But, yes ma'am? Um, like on this, when you're doing the exhortation of the doctors, what you were saying earlier is you have exhortation, doctrine, exhortation, uh, like he you know, starts it saying, you know, if you remember one thing, remember this, mm -hmm. the doctrine, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, is that the same way, or are we doing exhortation? I'm just showing you the doctrine in Romans is all I'm doing, and that will include the exhortations. Both. Yeah, it's going to include both. The way Proverbs has done this is it gives you all the exhortations up front, and then it starts in Proverbs 10, and from there to 20 is the doctrine. Now, interspersed in there will be some other exhortations in the midst of that doctrine, but he gives you all those exhortations up front. And so, now you see how level one, and that's where we're going to be going first. This is what you're going to be looking at. Now, when you look up here, what did I skip? I skipped Romans 9, 10, and 11. Well, wait a minute. Didn't we come straight through in Proverbs? Mm -hmm. So you're going, wait a minute. I thought Proverbs kind of matched that. Where's the exhortation in Proverbs? There you go. Romans 9, 10, and 11 talks to you about the dispensational change. And Proverbs didn't know anything about that. So it's missing. How beautiful is that? I mean, I look at that and I go, man, God is good with that, isn't He? The thing that was a mystery from the foundation of the world when Proverbs is written, if there was one single exhortation sitting over in Proverbs about anything in those three chapters, then Paul would have been dishonest with us. There's not one single thing in the Proverbs. In the Proverbs, you know what you're just looking at? You're just looking at the thing straight through. But when Paul comes along, he goes, I'm going to orient you. By the way, there's real wisdom to this. I'm going to orient you to your sonship. I'm going to establish you in your sonship. Then I'm going to tell you about the dispensational change. And then I'm going to start your education. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, we have three whole chapters before we get to chapter 12. But look. You already know about the dispensational change. Those chapters are going to go very, very quickly. I just need to make sure that everybody that's listening on the tape is going to be able to get it. If they're not here, they need to be able to get it. And so with that in mind, and we're almost out of time here, but what I'm trying to do is hook all this together. Can you see how this is working here? Okay. So with that in mind... Let me see, I need to give you some summary statements, and, and they're not on your note taker, but let me just give them to you here. Here's a summary statement. I know you're looking at this, you're saying this is long, and I, believe me, I boiled this down. But the, the summary statement for to receive the instruction of wisdom, here's where we're going to define it. To receive the instruction of wisdom involves, and here's the things that it involves. 
being skilled in detecting the paths of your heavenly Father, which are consistent with who you are as His adopted Son, and what is reasonable in your conduct and behavior as a son who understands God's plan and purpose for him as a member of the church, the body of Christ, and how to differentiate God's path from every other path that's going to try to tempt you or allure you from God's path. Now, is there, I'm hoping I said that in a way where you caught it, but there's really two elements to this. I included some other things in there because I want you to make a connection. But the first part of this is being skilled in knowing what your, the paths of your heavenly Father. In other words, what would He do? Being skilled to know what that is. The second part is down here. How that path differs from every other path that you're going to be offered. And believe me, you're going to be offered other paths. And they are going to be shiny. You know what I'm saying when I say that? Oh, they're going to attract your attention. Oh, they're going to look good. Oh, they're going to appear to be something great. You need, that skill is going to allow you to see what your Father's offering you. And even though this looks real shiny, you're going to have the ability to go, that's pretty empty. I see that for what it is. And you're going to see your Father's path for what it is. So those are the two things that are there. Before we move to the next one, let me take you to the middle of this. And it says, and what is reasonable in your conduct and behavior? Does anybody know where I pulled that word? That's right, Romans 12 in that checkpoint, which is your reasonable service. Paul's going to say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Service. When he talks about your reasonable service, what does that mean? It's what should be done, right? Right? If you ever heard a parent going, man, those kids expect me to cook for them. Those kids expect me to, as a parent, guess what? That's your reasonable service, right? That's what's expected. That's why Paul's not commanding you. By the way, you notice how he starts this off? He doesn't say, I command you. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy. And when you get over there, you'll know what those mercies are. In fact, you already know what some of those are. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you do this. Okay. And, 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 he's not, and the reason I put it in here is because he's not asking you to do anything that as a son, you shouldn't be looking at and going... That's exactly what I ought to be doing. Okay? Here's the next one. Summary statement for receive the instruction of justice. The effectual working of the instruction in godly justice is the ability to discern between right and wrong and make just and right decisions based upon your Heavenly Father's norms and, uh, norms and standards of what's right and wrong. The reason I say it like that is because this. Right now, you look around at the things that you do. Okay, okay let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Let's say that you're fixing to register to vote. Is it wrong to register to vote? Why not? No, no. Well, why is it not wrong to register to vote? Why is that not wrong? All right, all right. Let's do it like this. You want to, uh, Lowe's is closed today because it's Easter, but you want to go down and cut a hole in the glass and go in and fill your back seat up with groceries and drive home without paying for them. Is that right or wrong? wrong. Why is that wrong? Breaking the law. Oh. Gloria said, it's breaking the law. You know what the law is? No, she's not talking about the law of Moses. She's talking about there's a law in place in this country. You know what that is? That's norms and standards of conduct. What you can do and what you cannot do. What you're going to learn is your father's norms and standards. 
Let me ask you, if it's legal, does that mean it's right? There's the difference. You're not going to learn this country's norms and standards. You're not going to learn the norms and standards of the legal system. You're going to learn your Heavenly Father's norms and standards. And you know what? Just as we know I can't run a red light out here and expect to just get away with it because I violated the norms and standards of, of, of the city law. Your father has norms and standards. And so learning godly justice is going to learn what your heavenly father thinks is good and evil and you're going to make decisions based on that. Listen carefully. He doesn't mean you're going to ignore what's legal and what's not. You're not going to get to go rob a 7-Eleven because, you know, you're saying, you know, that's, that's the city's deal. I answer to a higher authority, <laughs> You don't get to go do that. But what he is going to say is, the decisions that you're making, I want you to make based on my norms and standards of right and wrong. Does that make sense? All right, at least now. I mean, all we're doing is covered. Here's the last one, and we'll quit. Summary statement for to receive the instruction of judgment. The effectual working of the instruction and godly judgment equips the son with the capacity to distinguish between multiple choices when there is no clear-cut right or wrong choice to be made. In other words, what if you... Let's, let's just use our society, for example. What if there's no... What, you know what? Before the Internet came along, there was no laws that actually governed that Internet. Someone... You know what? It was pretty much everybody did what they wanted to do. Well, here's what's going to happen. You're going to come on some decisions that you're going to make in which you're not going to be able to find anywhere that someone said, this is good or this is evil. You're not going to find that. In fact, you may be looking at three different choices and all three of them are good. But you need to know which one to make. That's what judgment does. Now, if I could just end it with this. Learning about, godly learning about godly justice is when something that, there is something that tells you this is right or this is wrong. Godly judgment is when there's nothing to tell you that this is either right or wrong. Do you see? There's a little bit of a difference. Boy, can you see how wise God is to cover every single piece of this thing? This is going to be great. Please don't look at the complexity of this and think it's going to be complicated. It's way easier than you think. Okay. Well, we're out of time. We've done what we're going to do today. So we'll come back next time, and we're going to take up that summary statement on godly equity, and we're going to try to get down the road to finish up this little overview of the table of contents so we can get back and start on our sonship establishment. I know